Hi there everyone. Once again, we're at the Royal Society in London with head librarian Keith Moore and an object he's been talking to me about for, it feels like a year or two now. Yeah. We finally have it, we're finally going to feature it. Keith, what is it? This is a miracle of miniaturisation. This is William Hyde Wollaston's thimble battery. First of all, it has its own little leather case, which is very fragile, but you can see immediately how it would just slide in there nicely, okay. and you could put it into your pocket. So that's just the little holster you use to carry yeah, it around. Yeah, that's right, but this is the thing itself. It looks like a car key. Yeah, we well, can see immediately what it's made out of. This is just a thimble. It's literally like a it's, squashed thimble. Yep, it's just been hammered flat. It's just a thimble, and it's just a nice, small container for some mixed material. We think it was made in, in the run-up to about 1811, so it's from the uh, first decade of the um, uh, 19th century, so it is quite an early piece. You have a plate of zinc in the middle, and if you put some mild acid in there, some sulfuric acid, you begin to get a wet battery. It will generate a little bit of current for you. And you can see the plate is connected on the outside to a couple of wires, which have been soldered onto the stem here. And there are a couple of borax beads, which just keep the two wires apart. So Keith, what's the point of this? It's almost like a scientific toy. This was something you could put in your pocket just as a demonstration piece and what you would do would be to put a, a little wire bridging those other two wires and it would warm up light up if you got lucky and, and sometimes even melt so it was a demonstration of, of electrical current at that kind of miniature scale so it would be just to yeah to show off or say oh look yeah, oh, yeah the batteries these are the new big thing but have a look what I have in my pocket I'll just pop some sulfuric acid into there, which I just happen to have about my person, and uh, <laughs> off, you, off you go. There are one or two of these little demonstration pieces around, but this was given to the Royal Society by the family, so we think that this is the genuine Wollaston article. Now, of course, we know William Hyde Wollaston from his work on elements. He very famously collaborated with Smithson Tennant on platinum. Wollaston had discovered palladium as an element and rhodium. So he tends to be known as a metallurgist rather than as, as somebody who dabbled in electricity like this. This became quite a famous novelty and people were writing about it for, for quite a while afterwards. So this is a history of electricity. This is element Elements of Physics by a guy called Peschel, and this was printed in London in 1846. And it just has a little section here on Wollaston's battery. So we have a, a kind of a picture. It's not quite the same as the one you can see here, but the principles are the same. And you can read just from here what Wollaston's battery was all about. Wollaston's thimble apparatus is the smallest hydroelectrical apparatus ever constructed. This miniature battery is represented in figure 191 of its actual size. P is a strip of thin silver or platinum leaf bent so as to embrace an amalgamated zinc plate, Z, at a distance of about a line. The insulation between the metals is affected by means of little pieces of cork thrust between them. Z and P are the two copper or silver polar wires slit at the ends into which is let a very fine platinum wire no more than a line in length. So we've got his Platinum, of course, for, yeah. for Wollaston. The wire hook serves for suspending this little battery in a glass containing some dilute sulfuric acid. The current transmitted through the wire between P and Z sets the latter in a state of incandescence. It That's lights up. Lights proves up. Proves its electricity, yeah. Wow. Humphrey Davy incorporated platinum wire in, in one of his minor safety lamp designs because it would, it would glow and light up. There we go. So famous that it was even being written about. Now this has been in the Royal Society's collections for a very long time and it was, it was regularly exhibited really up until the 1930s when the Society had a minor clear out of some of its historical apparatus. And this one went to the Oxford Museum for the History of Science on a long-term loan and has just returned. So this is an old Royal Society thing that for me is a bit of a novelty. But uh, now we have it back and uh, we can exhibit it on objectivity and of course as a, as a physical thing yeah and I just think it's it's a it's a nice example of how scientists would construct kind of little toys to demonstrate scientific principles carry them about their person we know about William Crookes and his his tie pin which is a radiometer and this kind of falls into that kind of category but I guess also it, it sort of demonstrates the principle that 
Well, actually, you can have a battery that small. And if you're in the iPhone generation, of course, we expect it. But at this period, this must have been an incredible novelty. All right, well, thank you for getting it out for us. I guess you better go put it back on charge now. Bet I had, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing this is our object. Tell us, we're talking about a guy called William Crookes. Well, that's right. William Crookes eventually became a president of the Royal Society, very eminent chemist and, and physicist. Uh, and he invented a raft of instruments, many of which turned out to be very, very useful. Some not very useful. Not very useful. This that, is a, that's my favourite guy. Indeed. Radiometers. Crookes was weighing some chemicals on, on, on very fine scales in a vacuum, and he, he noticed that they moved about a bit, and he wanted to try and explain this effect. So he, he invented radiometers to, to explore that, 